Incognito here, Sunday, March 24th, Vandenberg Air Force Base. I've been working on my 2007 Dodge Mercedes Sprinter 144 wheelbase power system for quite a long time. Five hundred forty watts tiltable solar panel array, six thousand BTU digital uh, thermostat controlled air conditioner with remote control, and it's mostly powered by the solar panels. So when I have at least that much sun, it'll power that air conditioner because that air conditioner only wants about four hundred and twenty watts. Here we have. 240 volt electric charging station J1772N for electric vehicle charging stations. Here we have 30 amp shore power in and also a stealth 15 amp. First I'm going to show you how I'm charging by way of alternator is here. This is a Victron 50 amp 12 volt so that's about 23 amps of 24 volt. There's a little bit of uh, conversion loss efficiency of a few amps. So anytime I'm driving, I'm charging the power station that way. Now you finally get to see Tippy. Hey, come see the audience. Hey, Tippy. He's 15 year old Beagle Whippet mix. He and I have achieved this power system that I consider innovative, creative, professional. I have a website, econito.org, with all of the information and links to the products that, um, that I'm going to talk about in the diagram. Here's a clean diagram, and then here is a photo, and then description, product links. What you want, little baby? He's been wanting a lot of attention. He's hungry. Um, he's 100% blind, so I have that that thing, that uh, net going across. So, here I'm going to start talking about the power system. This is a system that I created on my own. There's not one like it. Not quite like it. There are just a couple a little bit similar. There was Will Prowse who built something pretty crappy and he backed out of it and switched over to uh, another um, standard 12 volt battery he was he's such a wussy um, so and I think another one is Morton on the move Tom Morton he's pretty busy doing other stuff trying to make money with uh, promoting Lance um, camper trucks now uh, so okay so I'm one of the few who's available you can leave comments in the comment section and I will actually respond. At least at the time of this video, I'm not um, overwhelmed by YouTube uh, audience. I'm, okay, so ideally I would have the 24 volt DC and 12 volt DC section on one side and then 120 volt and 240 volt section on the other side. Again, the 240 volt uh, this is the plug here. That one is for electric vehicle charging stations. And then this one is for shore power. Neither one I need much anymore. Now that I have the badass Tesla module, I just don't depend on anything anymore except some sun once in a while. And, okay, so I've redesigned this many, many times. When I had the AGM batteries where this storage box is now, um, even then I had redesigned it many, many times. I'm hoping I'm done by now. Let's try to explain what's going on here. We have a 24 volt Tesla module that has about 444 little Panasonic battery cylinders in there. And it's lithium ion, I believe it's cobalt chemistry. So it's um, potentially a little bit more vulnerable to thermal runaway than, um, than lithium iron phosphate. 
And on my website, I talk about the pros and cons of this versus the safer battery. So I wrap this in fiberglass. This is a welding blanket. I got it for just something like $20 at um, Harbor Freight. And down here we have the 24 volt to 12 volt converter, some fuses, a master shutoff switch for the negative side. There's a master shutoff switch for the positive side there. Also a master switch here. I can pull that out, shuts everything off and off of the battery protect. And then um, there's also a breaker here, a master. Oh, did I already talk about that? Okay. And I have other various breakers for um, everything to include the Solar In has its own breaker. The Shore Power In has a breaker. The Shore Power also has a electric management system, which if I were to start over, I would not buy that because it's so rare that I'm connected to Shore Power. Um, here is a inexpensive power supply. You can switch it from Shore Power to electric vehicle charging station back and forth. And this is a iCharger X6, has a balancer. That's what I use to balance when I'm plugged into shore power. And as most people know, familiar with Tesla modules, it's not very necessary to balance, or not necessary to balance very often. But I'm running the Tenergy right now because it's been a few months since I balanced and it's actually better to balance when you're plugged into shore power but i'm not plugged into shore power i haven't been plugged into shore power for a long time it's been many months and the battery weighs about 55 to 60 pounds i have it fastened with metal straps they're concealed the straps are concealed with masking tape two layers of masking tape to help it blend in i don't need the cooling or heating um, hooked up. The reason why I mounted the module underneath my desk, this is a sit-stand hydraulic desk, is because in the living space this is a dead area that I can't do anything with anyway. This is where I scoot in with my chair and my knees come out to about here so there wouldn't be anything I can do with that anyway. It's just crap real estate. And I wanted it in the living area for climate control because you cannot charge a lithium battery as of this video by way of um, any method when it's freezing temperature. And if I mounted it back there where I would normally mount it, then it's more susceptible to freezing underneath the bed back there. So now I have this uh, 3000 watt inverter. I, I tried smaller inverters and they failed uh, so for cooking and things like that because I have a electric induction stove here. Let me tip these treats out of the way. So this guy here uh, helps me get off of propane. I have no propane in here. And for heating, I have a diesel heater that is supposed to blow clean air out because it combusts the diesel inside and in enclosed housing and exhausts it underneath the vehicle and it's not supposed to come through here. What else do we need to know? I have several power strips down here. It's amazing how many things I have plugged into 110, 120, 115 volt AC. This is a Victron Bluetooth, solar charge controller. Um, it's very sufficient. And this is the monitor for the electric man management system when I'm plugged into shore power. These are the inlets when I want to plug in something like an electric heater directly to shore power. It will go through that transfer switch and do that. I don't have anything plugged in there now because shore power is so rare for me. So the uh, the inverter does cut off somewhere around, I think, 20 volts or something like that. But you would want that anyway, even though I know the Tesla can handle going down to maybe 19. 
but it's probably safer for everything just to go ahead and shut off at um, 20 volts anyway so there's no need I don't think there's a need for an expensive Victron inverter charger and all that kind of stuff that so many other people doing this think there is a need for it uh, as you see the charger is on the solar charger is on float because I had a lot of solar today that charged everything up really well and the balance cable here I have to move it back up here to this charger if I were to use this for balancing the positive side of the Tesla module I had to use a little bit longer bolt than the stock one to get all these necessary things to fit on there that need to be directly connected to the battery such as the alternator charger the inverter and the the main load we go from the battery this goes up to the 150 amp ANL fuse and that goes to the battery protect oh, it's kind of hard squeezing underneath I'm such a big person to squeeze underneath this bed it goes to this battery protect and then from the battery protect it goes to the breaker and then to the bus bar this power system is mounted 100 percent on the wall of the vehicle that's what makes this one especially unique i love wall mounting stuff like this for several reasons a lot of the times i screw directly into the frame of the vehicle so there's a good ground uh, a secondary ground and also that when you screw into the vehicle that's a really secure connection i'll show you the vectron bmv 712 monitor real quick it shows you the current voltage temperature of the battery 65 degrees it always stays there between there and 75 charge percent 100 percent charged current usage four amps um, this will fluctuate depending on how much solar is coming in it'll be in the positive when it's charging and the negative when there's more energy being consumed versus coming in for charging and professor tippy do you have anything to say give me food all right so yeah the website good information I'll be making more videos regarding this system but I just wanted to throw this out there as a pretty good summary of what's going on I think this um, fiberglass blanket looks really nice and it's a little tricky to work with to get it wrapped around and your hands will itch if you're working with it very much I don't believe it's releasing enough if you're not messing with it like I just did it's not going to release anything that's going to get in your lungs now if you want to be really cautious you could wear a mask anytime you're messing with that fiberglass blanket and I do have a wood cover that I put in front here so this is not always exposed like that cabin has also a battery monitor so when I'm driving and I want to um, charge the battery let's say it's down to something like 21 or 20.5 20 volts that's about the time I need to start charging and so I could be in the redwoods forest or something there's no solar so I'll go drive around and joyride all the while charging my battery so that's both eco-friendly and not eco-friendly that has its own individual shunt separate from the monitor here I'll show you the shunts you need to see these this is the shunt for the big the Victron BMV 712 that's the sophisticated high-tech shunt and then it goes to this one secondary shunt to the front cab which is less important so the more important one I have coming first from the battery this main switch shuts off the negative from the battery so we go from the, the negative post on top to the shutoff switch to the Victron BMB 712 to this shunt and then to the 24 volt negative battery bus bar that everything else connects to 
So nothing, well, except for the couple of things I have connected directly to the battery, um, nothing bypasses, very little bypasses this, so I get an accurate reading of power consumption. So out of curiosity, what do I have on here? I have solar battery protect. Oh yeah, the battery protects the main line and uh, what's the, oh yeah, the charger. Yeah, so all those things should be connected directly to the battery. Oh, I love this Dyson V7. I think they have a V8 now. This thing's awesome. That's how I keep it clean in here. All right, good to meet you. I'll get with you again soon. Click all the little buttons below.